So looking again at a part of the problem that asks us to simplify the algebraic expression. Um, here again I'm looking and I see a bunch of random stuff. It looks like algebra to me, numbers and letters. I know it's an expression because there's no equal sign written there, so I'm not solving this. Right, so we're not solving, there's no equal sign. We're just trying to make it prettier, see if you can put things together, simplify. Combine like terms, possibly look to see if there's any simplification with power rules, but here I'm looking and I see lots of adding and subtracting. And I can think to myself immediately then, I'm probably looking about combining like terms, because remember you can only add and subtract terms that are like. So I need to take a look at this problem and see what we've got in terms of like terms. So I'm going to look again at the base and the power of things. I've got an a to the power of m, and I see I have a second a to the power of m. So I can go ahead and I'm going to circle those and say those are like terms. The next thing I'm going to notice is that I've got an R and a B with an S, and I've got a K and a B with an S. So we're not exactly sure what to do here because it looks very different. First, first, two prob or first two terms that we circled, it was easy. It was like a 2 a to the power of m, negative 3 a to the power of m. That's easy. We know we have a to the power of m. But here, we have to do one more step for this. So we can actually combine r to the power of r b to the power of s and negative k b to the power of s. But we've got to think about how we write that. So I might do the first one, just the 2 and the 3, and think about how we could write that as two steps instead of one. Normally we think in our head, oh, that's 2, take away 3 is going to give me negative 1. But let's do that. Let's actually write it out. 2, take away 3, and the a to the power of m is still going to be on there because I'm just combining the front term, the coefficients there. So 2 take away 3, that becomes negative 1 a to the power of m, which some people might just write as negative a to the m. So let's think about how we can do that for the second terms that we've got here, with the ones with b to the power of s that they share in common. So b to the power of s is something they have in common. Let's think what could happen if we tried to combine those coefficients. Well here they're obviously variables and not numbers, so we can't do something like 2 minus 3 gets us an answer. But let's think about this. We had an r and a minus k, just like we had a 2 and a minus 3. So I can put 2 minus 3 inside the brackets times a to the power of m simplifies to negative a to the m. Here I'm looking at putting what they have in common in front, r minus k times bs and there was going to be a positive sign here. So I do not know what r is or what k is. I cannot combine those to get me one digit like I had with the negative 1, but I can leave that just exactly as it is. So plus r minus k times b to the power of s. And another way to think about doing that is that basically here we have factored so we saw that b to the power of s was in common for both of those square terms. We were able to factor b to the power of s out. And what's left behind is basically the variable combination there that works. And in a sense, that's the same thing as combining like terms here. They both had a b to the power of s, so we can add them together. And then I'm factoring them out. So that is your final answer there. Um, if you're not sure or can't remember what the factoring is, you might want to peek ahead at that and, and remind yourself on how to factor. It could help you interpret this problem in a different way. But let's take a look at a second example with that same idea. We're going to look for things that have terms in common that are like terms that have, for instance, the same base and a power, and we're going to see what we can combine. So looking down, we've got b c to the power of x minus a c to the power of y plus 4 c to the power of y minus 7 c to the power of x. Um, I can tell immediately that I have a lot of C's, so the bases are the same. Um, but we have to take a look here and see what else is the same in terms of powers. So I notice that I've got an A and a B, but I don't have more than one A or more than one B, so I can't combine those to anything else. So looking at the C's, I have a C to the power of X, and I have a C to the power of Y. And c to the power of x is not a like term with c to the power of y. The bases are the same, they're both a c, 
but the powers are different. The power of x is different than the power of y. So I'm going to look here and I'm going to say c to the power of x with the b in front is similar to minus 7 c to the power of x because they both have a c to the power of x. Next ones I'm going to look for are the a c to the power of y and the plus 4 c to the power of y. So again, trying to put terms together. So the two circle terms here, they have a similar base, and so I can think about that same process. I've got a b c to the power of x minus a 7 c to the power of x. So I can write that out. I would go b minus 7 times c to the power of x. And then here, I've got two more terms, and they both have c to the power of y, and I would say to myself, okay, it's going to be a tricky one here, um, that's a negative a and a plus 4, so I can say negative a plus 4, put those into brackets, and then c to the power of y. Now the catch for us here is that we're missing any sort of plus or minus sign that we might need to put between those two terms that we've got now. So in this case, I'm going to put a plus sign. And I'm going to double check that by saying, okay, well if I expanded the plus sign through, assuming it was like a positive 1, that would leave me with a negative a, which I needed, and a positive 4, which I also needed. So this answer would work and it's sufficient, but I'm just going to go a little bit further to tidy it up because I don't like seeing just the negative a sitting there in front. It looks a bit weird. So another way that we could go about doing that is think about just swapping the place of those terms, like write them in a different order. So I could leave the b minus 7, c to the power of x, plus about 4 minus a c to the power of y. These would be the exact same thing. They mean the exact same thing. I've just written them down in a different order, but keeping the signs with them. So it was a negative a to start with, and I have a negative a here, and a positive 4 to start with, and I also have a positive 4. And make sure you get a plus sign, or in the case might be if they're both negative, you could factor out a negative sign in between, but make sure you've got some sort of sign in between those two things that you've done. So, um, I'm just going to write that a little bit closer, c to the power of y. So that's probably how I would leave my final answer. And again, it's similar to factoring in a way. We're looking for two things that have something in common. In a sense, we're factoring out the c to the power of x, and we're factoring out the c to the power of y, if factoring seems familiar to you. But you can also look at it from the combining like terms point of view of, well, I can't actually add b and 7 or b and negative 7, but I can write down that if I could, I would. So I'm going to put it in brackets and say, if I could do the subtraction between b and 7, I would, and then put it in front of the c to the x, but I can't. So I'm just going to show you that that's the next step that we would do. So again, combining like terms, in this case, when you possibly have to factor or think about how to show it because you can't actually just combine the variables. there. Er, combine the numbers in front, there tend to be variables in front as well.